Meanwhile, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan joining me on Sunday Morning Futures yesterday on the whistleblowers accusing the FBI of being weaponized. Watch this. They, they have the full wrath of the FBI come down on them. And as Garrett O'Boyle said, they're attempting to crush them and chill any other whistleblowers from coming forward and telling us about the wrongdoing going on in the Justice Department. Yes, FBI agent Garrett O'Boyle and two others testifying before Congress last week, alleging that they were actually the victims of retaliation. Watch. The FBI will crush you. This government will crush you and your family if you try to expose the truth about things that they are doing that are wrong. And we are all examples of that. Joining me right now in a first on Fox business interview, the man himself, FBI whistleblower Garrett O'Boyle. Garrett, thanks very much for being here this morning. I was really dismayed to hear what you have been through. Uh, you say your life was upended, that the FBI left your family homeless after you spoke out. What happened? And tell me when you first started to feel this retaliation. Uh, so I, I really started to feel the retaliation uh, the day I got suspended. I was completely uh, unaware that that was coming and that that was going to happen. Uh, as I testified, I had uh, been selected for a new specialty unit in the Quantico region. And uh, when I, after we sold our house and um, had our youngest daughter and began to move across the country, when I reported for duty on that first day, um, I was promptly suspended. And uh, that that is really when the retaliation began. That is really terrible. Um, how long had you been with the FBI at that point? You've been a loyal soldier to this government for a long time. And because you spoke out about what you saw happening, uh, you were retaliated against. How long were you at the FBI? And tell me what happened that you witnessed uh, the the rot that you and your colleagues talked about in testimony. Right. So I had been with the FBI just about four years uh, when I was suspended. And uh, in total, I've served this country or my community for 14 years. And, um, yeah, some of the things we testified about uh, include, you know, just a reasonable belief that uh, the FBI is intentionally mishandling investigations, uh, including uh, padding statistics on, on how they represent uh, facts to Congress and uh, a number of other issues like the uh, domestic violent extremism uh, symbols guide that, that I testified to. And th there's a number, number of things that, that we can talk about regarding uh, concern that not only us whistleblowers, but many employees in the FBI have. And did you feel that it was largely the leadership? Because, you know, Garrett, we've covered this. And as the FBI pursued uh, wiretaps on uh, Trump officials, Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, among others, even though they had absolutely no evidence of any collusion, and that, of course, story divided our country greatly, uh, then they sat on the Biden laptop as President Trump was getting impeached. Um, and, and they pursued uh, doing an investigation of Trump and didn't do anything about Hillary Clinton, even though there were claims that she was accepting money from foreign powers. H how did this all play out within the agency while you were there? Right. It certainly appears that it's a two-tiered system, and, and it's, it's in favor of one uh, political leaning over the other. And inside the agency, from my view, as a lion agent, uh, it it is... Many of us saw these things, similar things to what you're, you just mentioned. And yes, that rot, it, it is at the headquarters level. It is at the top. I would estimate probably 20% of the agency, the senior executive staff level. And honestly, it's probably not even all of them, just a lion's share of them who have really distorted and twisted the agency. You know, I, I've compared it to uh, a Hoover-like uh, FBI again, where back then it was really just Hoover who was running the show and in charge and had his own henchmen. Now, I think Director Ray is uh, pretty much insulated from a lot of that, and, and maybe he does that intentionally. And then it's these other SES level employees who are, are more of a conglomerate of a Hoover. It's like a 10 headed snake instead of a one headed snake today.
So, so what does the, the masses at the FBI say? How, how is the sentiment on the ground? I know that there are uh, amazing people who work at the FBI, amazing, loyal to America uh, people who work there, and, and they want a bias-free environment. But what are you actually witnessing on the ground? And how does the sentiment, how has it changed within the ranks? So the sentiment has changed in that, uh, you know, a, a former colleague reached out to me after I after my testimony, and uh, we discussed how a number of senior level agents on his squad. So the, these are agents who have had 10, 15 years. They're they're getting closer to retirement. He said that all of them cannot wait to get to retirement. They want to get out of the agency as fast as possible, but they just want to keep their heads down and make it to that retirement, which. From my view and from the situation I'm in, I, I think that that's an unfortunate uh, position to take because if every employee in the FBI, agents, analysts, it doesn't matter what type of employee you are, if they all stood up and pointed out the wrongdoing that the FBI is engaging in, I think we'd be better off as a nation. Yeah, we're looking at the others uh, who were suspended after questioning the handling uh, of uh, uh, of so many investigations. So now we're left with the question of, you know, what happens now? What is going to fix this? I spoke with Congressman Jim Jordan yesterday about how he'll use the appropriations process to dial back the FBI. And here's what he said to me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures. Watch. Speaker McCarthy and Republicans are committed to doing all 12 appropriation bills that fund the government over the next several months. I think the first one will be coming out in a couple weeks. We've been meeting with the appropriation staff, our staff on Judiciary Committee, to work on how we can limit money, American tax dollars, being used in these ways and, and deal with the overall budget that the FBI and the DOJ is receiving. Garrett, of course, we all follow the money, but is that going to be enough to hold back funding for the FBI to change the culture? Or do you feel that you really need a new head at the top? Christopher Ray has been there now after Jim Comey. Is it the same culture under Ray that it was under uh, Comey? You know, in my tenure, I had only served under Ray, but there did seem to be a dramatic change in the culture in just the short time I was there. Now, that being said, with the appropriations process, I think that's a good starting point. But there are other things that need to change, too. And I hope uh, people like Congressman Jordan and others, current and former FBI employees, as I testified to, we all need to come together to really fix the cancerous rot that is being seen at the FBI. Garrett, what are you going to do? I mean, you've been uh, a loyal employee there for now four years. You've served the government for 14 years. You got suspended. You said it made your family homeless. What are your plans? You know, we honestly are taking it day by day. We're, we're trusting in the Lord and his provision and his guidance. And, and he's the one planting our steps and, and paving our way. And we don't necessarily know what the way is right now. Uh, that being said, uh, we're starting to see a lot of support. And I'm going to continue this fight. You know, the FBI still claims that I'm technically an employee, I'm just suspended. So I'm going to now keep speaking out of, about this, these problems in the FBI. I'm going to continue to try to fight and get my job back. I won't hold my breath there because I'm, I'm sure they are going to ramp up the pressure to try to get rid of me even more now. But uh, we're just gonna take it step by step and, and trust in God's providence for, for us and my family and for this nation. Garrett, are you still getting paid then? No, I, I've not been getting paid for many months now. Well, you just said that they said you're still technically an employee. Right. So this is part of their uh, tyrannical retaliation. They wow. suspend your security clearance, and then they say, you know, you are technically an employee, and, and then they suspend your pay because they ratify the decision that they had made about suspending your security clearance to begin with. And they, they basically try to keep you in a purgatory-like state, uh, because if you if I was to resign, then I would have no recourse, because if I tried to sue to get my job back, the FBI would simply say, hey, he resigned on his own volition. We didn't have anything to do with that. He chose to resign. Uh, so wow. I'm, I don't plan on resigning anytime soon. Uh, you know, I won't be able to do this forever. Uh, but for now, um, 
we're, we're going to keep trying to, to fight the good fight and, and uh, shine a light in the darkness that the FBI continues to try to hide. Garrett, it takes real courage to do what you're doing. We appreciate that, and we appreciate your leadership. We hope that you'll come back soon to keep us updated. We're going to certainly keep a spotlight on this, Garrett. That you can be sure of. Thank you, Maria.